Hello, everyone. Welcome once again to this series on strength of materials and on this channel. Kindly subscribe, like, share, leave your comments and suggestions as well. Today, we are looking at axial deformation, statically indeterminate, using compatibility condition. Example two. So let's look at our question and then we we'll see how we are going to solve that. Good. So we have this question, a polystyrene rod consisting of two cylindrical portions, A and B. AP and BC is restrained at both ends. If A is two megapascal, determine the reaction at A and C and the normal stress in each portion of the rod. So quickly, let's look at how to solve this. Good. When you are given this question, statically indeterminate problems are solved using two methods. The first one is using the compatibility, the compatibility method. And the second one is using the superposition the superposition method. We solve this similar example using the superposition method. Now we want to solve the same example using the compatibility method. So what you are going to do is that first of all, you draw your free body diagram for the structure. You know that you have two rigid supports. So you draw free body diagram for your structure taking away all supports. So at A, we are going to get a support reaction at support, we can call it FA. At C, we are also going to get reaction at support and we can call it FC. And we have a force of eight at this side. We also have a force of eight at that side. So from here, we can write our equilibrium equation. Our equilibrium equation, any force which is going up will be positive, whereas any force coming down is going to be negative. So from here, we can say that F is going up positive. FC is going up also, so we can call it positive. Minus eight down, minus eight down is equal to zero. So from here, we can say that FA we can say that FA plus FC is equal to 16. So this will be our equation one. Don't forget that you have already stated that we are using the compatibility method. When you are using the compatibility method, what you are going to do is that you are going to divide your structure into two sections, assuming that there is no external force applied or you are going to cut your session into two equal halves at the point where the external force has been applied. So here we can see that the external force is applied at B. So we can divide the whole structure at B into two sections. And I draw the free body diagram for AB and also for BC. So for AB, the structure will look like this with a reaction called FA. At this side. And the force, the external force which is applied is here. We call it T. So we can call it, we can call it as P1. P1. So we do the same for this other session two. This session one, this is where we have done the free body diagram. We can do the similar one for this other session, which is number two here. And because this P, that is where the force was applied, and we have indicated this one as pointing downwards. So at this side, the one where it was cut should be in the opposite direction to what we have indicated here. 
Therefore, we can get another force here. We can call it P1, but that one will be moving upward. And this will be the reaction at C, the reaction at C. So we can call it F of C. Once you have been able to do that, looking at this first session and this second session, we can write the equilibrium equation. From the first session, we can see that F of A minus P1 should be equal to zero. And from there, we can see that, we can see that F A is equal to D1. We can do similar for the session two. Sorry, I indicated wrongly the direction for FC. So from here, you see that FC is going up. So this is FC going up also. Let us stick to what we have already indicated up there. So from here, we can say that T1, which is going up, plus FC, which is also going up, is equal to zero. And from here, we can say that T1 is equal to negative fc. So once you have been able to draw this free body diagram, you can determine the elongation for this side and the elongation for this side. So the deformation for session one, deformation for session one will be, before we determine the deformation for session one, let us establish a concept. Because this bar here is supported readily at this end, and this is also supported readily at this end, what is going to happen is that this whole structure, though it is going to deform, the sessions are going to deform, but the whole thing is not going to elongate because of this. The whole session is not going to elongate because of these fixed structures at the end there, because of this rigid support it's not going to allow the whole structure to elongate. So we are saying that when you pick a point like A, with respect to this point C here, this A is not going to move. So it means that the deflection of radius support A with respect to radius support C should be equal to zero. So you can see that the deflection of A with respect to C should be equal to zero. And what are these deflections? A to C will be the deflection in section one plus the deflection in section two. So we can also write that deflection A to C, which is equal to zero, should be equal to deflection in one plus deflection in two should be equal to zero. Once we have been able to write that, then we can write the deflection for this part one and deflection for part two. So let's do that. We are going to get zero equals Our deflection in part one, we said that P1 is equal to FA. So our force will be FA times the length of the session, the length of P1. This is session one. So you can see that the length is 6.5 from B to A. The length is 6.5. 6.5 over the area, which is 3.142 times the diameter, which is 0 0.32, 3, 5, sorry for that, 0 0.35 squared, all on four times the modulus of elasticity, which we have to that is two times 10 to the power six, plus the deflection of this second session. But for the deflection of the second session, we said that P1 is equal to negative FC. So we are going to get negative FC times the length of this session here. The length from B to C is 5 over 3.14 to the area times the diameter squared. So the diameter is 0 0.5 squared all on four times the modulus, which is two times 10 to the power six. Once you have been able to do that, we can just simplify this 
expression there, and from there we are getting zero equals. When you simplify the whole of that and the whole of that, don't forget that this negative is going to, it's also there. So we are going to get 3.378 and times 10 to the power negative 5 FA minus because of this negative sign. So we have one point. One point two seven three times ten to the power negative five FC. Then from here, this will be our equation two. And we already have equation one in terms of FA and FC. So we solve one and two simultaneously. We solve one and two simultaneously. And from there, when you solve equation one and equation two simultaneously, our FA will be equal to 4.4 4 kilonewtons. You can just point on that on calculator and then you verify. And our FC, from there, our FC will also be equal to 11. Point six. Sorry for that. Our FC will be equal to eleven point six kilo newtons. So we have determined the reactions at the support. You can go through our previous example and then look at how we calculated the the normal stresses in each of the sessions. Thank you very much for your time. And thank you for staying with us up to this time. We appreciate your support. And we hope you have understood the concepts. However, if there is anything which you don't understand, you can kindly let us know. Once again, we want to say thank you for watching. Kindly subscribe, like, share, and hit the notification bell as well. We shall meet again in our next video. Until then, bye-bye.